and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Kindred Swain. Gonna bring this one back with a, a couple of updates. But yeah, this was a really fun deck to play the last time that we did. I really enjoyed having um, a lot of like little damage uh, cards like Unspeakable Horror, Vile Feast, Death's Hand, that kind of stuff. And then we played a bunch of Scorched Earths last time. Um, but I'm actually going to be moving over. That's one thing I'm changing. I'm going to be moving over from Scorch Earth to Guillotine. But what I was going to say is I liked having the hard removal um, in the deck. But we're going to be playing three Guillotines in here. Because I don't think that killing the landmarks is as important. Um, I know like the Scar Grounds can be a really annoying landmark. But I think Guillotine is really good against the Vlad, uh, like the Vladimir Brom deck also. And so now with a lot of less people playing the Veil Temple... I think that just playing guillotines instead of Scorched Earth is going to be the way to go, like where we can uh, kill a bunch of larger units. So we're going to have that combined with our Withering Whale. Should hopefully be able to take down some a bunch of stuff. We got Sentry Flock combo in here. And we have two awesome champions that are both really cool and really fun to play with Kindred at Swain. Um, you know, Kindred, if we're, if we're slaying uh, small units with our Withering Whales and Vile Feast and stuff like that, Kindred can then... Uh, kill the larger units that will mark the larger ones, like whatever is this, the smallest thing left. Uh, of course, we have our Leviathan at the top end. Also, a couple Rekindlers, because whenever we play Kindred or Swain on turn 5, turn 6, like they, they may die, right? Like they, uh, our opponents could kill them. So we bring them back with Rekindler, because that's really what our deck is, is how we win, is with our champions and Leviathan, of course. So yeah, let's try this out with Triple Guillotine. I think that'll be pretty good. I did add in a second Culling Strike as well. Um, because there's a lot of Azir around. Now, there was before today. We've played against zero Azir today. But before this, we had been playing against a ton of Azir. And I think Culling Strike is just super good against Azir. So that's why I was going to play a second Culling Strike. But we'll see. All right, let's, let's go play some Kindred Swain. Okay, Tarek Garen. Could be a good Noxian Guillotine matchup. But we need to be able to do damage to their stuff first. Um, Culling Strike could theoretically kill a Garen. Or, wow. Kill a Taric. Like I meant to say. Let's keep the Vengeance. So we know they have an elite in hand. We don't know what that elite is. Wish I would have kept Ravenous Flock right now, of course. That was not the elite that was in hand. So it looks like it was the 3 2. So basically, because of Vanguard Bannerman, that's why I'm. Having some things trade. Or having something like that trade. For justice, for Demacia. I could definitely see them passing. Nope. Good job, Guillotine. Guillotine's pretty cool, pretty cool. <clears throat> Kindred or Swain? Nine mana. 
Not enough for a century plus vengeance. Done that. Just a little farther. Are they playing single combat? I don't know, I have the spirit journey. Yeah, that was weird attacking with that three two. They're just gonna let this happen. Yeah, that was kind of weird. So I kind of want to play Leviathan. So four cards in hand. If I Vengeance the Scythria, I don't really know... Like, what's, like, the worst that can happen? I don't know. We mark the 2-4. I mean, besides single combat here. Like, single combat right here would be kind of bad, but... We assume they don't kill my uh, my kindred this turn. I don't know what. We must all do our duty. Uh, it's a bannerman with challenger. Okay, yeah, somebody said that they can make the deck, but they only got have two Swain, so what else could you replace the Swain with? And I'd say probably Thresh, just off the top of my head, I would say Thresh. Yeah, yeah, probably Thresh. It's a good, you know, another control champion that's very similar. This will give me Withering Whale plus double flock. I don't like Kindred die. And just play new Kindred. I can say, you know, I can I can spirit journey this Bearman. I think it's probably better just to let Kindred die. Still be just fine. Fear the power you do not see. Soldier to me. Embrace life. Expect death. Yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. Grand Antonio, thanks for that resub for the fifth month now. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Grand Antonio. Okay, so we're going to go block, block, down to one. I don't think they're going to be able to do two damage to me, like non-combat wise. So we should be just fine. Hey, Kendis. Greetings. Hope you're having a good weekend. Let's just go stun. And Kendis with our resub. 
10 at months. GG's opponent. Thanks, Kendas. Um, yeah, stream's going strong. Okay, playing another Swain deck. They got Twisted Fate. I feel like I mulligan those, but I actually kind of like like Withering Whale, Vile Feast. Like this version, they can usually like they can usually like go wide and everything. I don't know. I kind of want to keep Whisper Words or Leviathan. I kind of want to keep one of those. Maybe this Whisper Words. No, we'll just mulligan. I'll feel bad. Okay, good. I was going to say, I'll feel bad if I can't find any top end stuff, but yeah, good. I'm really glad I mulliganed both of them now, though, with all three cards being top end cards. Yeah, sometimes we do a second meme tier day on Tuesdays as well. <laughs> Alright. Trading Vile Feast for Mega Rain. I think we'll still be able to figure out how to kill Twisted Fates and Swains. It'll be expensive, but we can figure it out. Thank you so much, Kendis, for taking care of that. Your favorite champ, Swain? Yeah. Swain's a, definitely a very good champ. That's a good pick for a favorite champ. Alright, so they should be using Ravenous Flock on the Kindred. But of course, that's something that I don't really mind. Because I got this Rekindler. That's my plan for the next turn. feel bad about that now. I guess not that bad. Yeah, Blade's Edge Flock's a little cheaper than Withering Will Guillotine. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have used that Withering Will then. I was just going to waste all that mana and I felt bad, but I, I still should have waited in case they had another... in case they Leviathaned. So they got an extra card and an extra thing in play, but we got some power. For we just we need cheap interaction. I don't have any cheap interaction right now. In the sky. That stuns and lets them attack me for lethal. 
Whoa, it's an aggro deck. First aggro deck of the day. They exist. They do exist. There is aggro. Oh, I should keep Swain. Well, we got now. Now I'm glad I didn't keep Swain. <laughs> Kindred. But Swain, Swain's actually like a good attacker, and because like this kind of deck, like this is a just because they're an aggro deck doesn't mean that we're gonna win. Okay. This is definitely a, can be tough because I think we lost to this deck the last time that we played. I think we went four one, and this was like our loss. Like we we beat it once and lost to it once. It kind of depends on their build. There's there's different builds of this Elise deck. If they're playing a deck with a lot of Nexus damage, like Imperial Demolitionist and Doom Beast and Noxion Fervors and Decimates and that kind of stuff, like that can be pretty tough for us to stabilize and win the game before we take 20 damage. And so Swain, the reason I'm saying I should maybe have kept Swain is that Swain can put a clock on and, and do the 20 damage pretty quickly. This isn't necessarily the best for us. We just kill this and then just do like maybe block one one block three one. Okay, ready. Obviously the three one gets blocked. I'm just kind of thinking of like whether or not to block the two one or the one one. I think we just take three. Yeah, Doombies can be nice. Also be nice. Good house spider draw. House spider is usually pretty good to draw. Everyone's a garden. Hmm. I don't have to worry that much about Kindred dying, considering we have Rekindler. But the thing is, is like if they do this correctly. Like, we're only gonna, you know, like, we're gonna mark, like, this hapless aristocrat, which isn't really, like, the best thing to mark. But. Okay, so now. We're not really marking anything. But we'll do that. They. I guess. I guess I could block the 2 1 in, instead of the 3 1. Yeah, I should have blocked the 2 1. Then I'd guillotine this. You'll be able to play that then, Doom Beast. Okay, well, we're down to nine. They have used lots of cards. That's a good draw. That is what a good draw looks like. Out in the wild. And I'm basically doing this right now to get damage on this like rear guard and house spider where I have block and guillotine. But I can't imagine that they can win from here. Where's my axe? And that would be the case, they cannot win from here. So yeah, so like this kind of version, with them just going wide a lot more and not like all burn spell, that makes it a lot better for our house spider withering whale type cards. So I'd rather play against this version than the uh, all Nexus damage version. All right, Lissandra, Swain. So we got another Swain deck. I don't know. Like I guess I keep the Sentry Flock combo. It's tough mulliganing a card as useful as like Unspeakable Horror. I don't know exactly what I want this Unspeakable Horde to do, but it, it just makes a lot of my other cards better. It makes, you know, like my Noxion Guillotines and Ravenous Flocks better. And it has, like, that Nightfall card advantage. And it doesn't cost a whole lot of mana. 
Withering Whale is not the card I want at all. So back to back, really worst card in our deck. Yeah, Withering Whale is the worst card in our deck for this matchup. Let the flames take you. All right, so I can unload a Withering Whale from my hand. It's a good trade for them. Basically, they net one mana. If if they don't play anything, they net one mana. If they play like Troll Chan or whatever to help save this thing, I'm fine with that. Yeah. So they netted a mana. Between those two cards trading off. Born a patrician, I became a soldier. We feast tonight, Mark. Witness strength. And I do have Rekindler. So even though they kill this and then flock. Ooh, not flock yet. Alright, so they got that extra mana. That was pretty nice. I didn't really consider Wolf Runner or uh Wolf Runner? Yeah. I didn't really consider that card whenever I was thinking about the 3-1. Swain's at one. <laughs> the one from the Withering Well. Yeah, triple ramp. Unfortunately, you can't just keep ramping into Oblivion in this game. Because they're stuck at ten, so now they just don't gain an extra mana the next turn. Um, I don't know if that's worth it. We got other cards that are much more important to kill. Blood of the snow. If they would have had the Battle Fury there that turn, then I would have Ravnus flocked, of course, after a Battle Fury. We've drawn very, very poorly this game. The two Withering Whales were very bad, and now these Culling Strikes are basically dead at this point. They can only kill Lissandra. We have drawn very bad. And obviously the Vile Feasts are not any good either. Like, these are <laughs> Withering Well, Withering Well, then Vile Feast, Vile Feast, and then Culling Strike, Culling Strike. This has been bad. Yeah, I'd, I wouldn't expect them to have Battle Fury. Drew the third Withering Whale, are you kidding me? Well, the good news is we it's going to be hard for us to draw this bad of cards still. I mean, we're out of Withering Whales, we're out of Culling Strikes, we've drawn all five of those. Even though they're the five worst cards in our deck, we've drawn all five. So now we're looking at like just Vile Feast and Unspeakable Horrors. Like those are like the only things left. This makes you want to give up. At least Unspeakable Horror gives us the Nightfall card. Yeah. 
Yeah, it doesn't does it get any unluckier than this. Let's just see what our next draw is. <laughs> oh man. I'd feel bad for any aggro deck that would have played against us this round though. Okay, we're playing against non-Swain. So far, we found out that we can't beat Swain, but we can, we're can. 2 against non-Swain, so I like seeing non-Swain. And this looks like a good hand. Good opener. Culling Strike good against Azir, and then House Spider uh, just kind of good against like the other random stuff, like their you know, 1 mana 2-1, two, 2 mana 3-1, like that kind of stuff. And we got Death's Hand. Ravenous Flock is always good. My opponent was playing Lissandra as the other champion. Oh, that card's going to be a real big problem for us, for us isn't it? Because I can't keep them... Like, I can't stop Azir from leveling up. All they got to do is play 10 allies and then play Azir and then Azir levels up. So I can't stop that. And we are a slow deck, so like that's already so it's basically like this thing's at thirteen. I can I can kind of keep Nasus from leveling up. Sun Disc is that great. So basically, you know, like we took out the Scorchers from this deck, and that's what we've been doing, like with these Noxus decks, is playing more guillotines, less you know, less Scorchers, because there's not that many. There's just not the like the main the main uh landmark that you want to kill these days is the Scar Grounds, but the other card's great against the Scar Grounds as well. So it does make sense, so if you um you know, if you're not going to be playing against, like, landmark removal, and if these decks are slower, if people are, you know, retuning their decks to be good against, um, good against aggro, and they're playing slower decks that are good against aggro, that could definitely mean that, like, it's, like, Sun Disc could, could really be a real thing. Especially, like, the, how the new 3 mana 3, 4 gets rid of 3 levels on the Sun Disc now. Ambassador grabbed that. Unfortunately, I was hoping it was going to grab Azir. I could still cooling strike the Azir. Men die, but Sharima lives forever. That wasn't a fight spell. If that was, you know, like a regular fight spell, that would have been nice, but... Well, I do have Flock Flock Death's Hand. That could maybe work. They do have different protection cards that could help protect it. 
I would love them to play like another siphoning strike. Two mana, I don't think they're going to be able to protect it, but they do get another champion. I forgot about Hourglass. I definitely did forget about Hourglass. How about that? forgot about that card. Well, good game. It heals? Why does Hourglass heal this card? Isn't it supposed to put back like the exact copy? Why is that healed? Yeah, that should have been 10-7 damage on him. These Shrima cards are sweet. Really should have done those Ravenous Flocks one at a time. I got really punished for doing like both at the same time. Or like it's so, like that's like the lesson learned though. Like I should just Ravenous Flock like the first time, see if they do anything, then Ravenous Flock the second time. Right? Like there's no reason to do those both at the same time. Like that was just a big mistake. Destination in sight. All of this is ours. Yeah, this Shurima deck is really cool. It is very good against like other mid-range style decks like we have. It just it struggles against aggro, but you know if you have three golden ambassadors, three siphoning strikes against mid-range, you're gonna be doing just fine. Okay, but yeah, like I really like that Sharima deck though. I I really enjoy playing that Sharima deck, and you can see you got to see like really the power of uh, two of my very favorite cards with golden ambassador and siphoning strike that game unfortunately that was for my opponent and so i was uh showing off their cards quite well um our deck was you know is all right again i expected a lot of aggro today because we had been facing lots of aggro before i know I've, this is what i've been harping on all day and so i'm sorry if you're tired tired of hearing this but you know just we got new people in all the time but yeah we we had been facing lots of aggro since the patch um and today out of 15 games we played against one aggro deck <laughs> one and so yeah it was it was kind of it was kind of tough um these swain decks um and you know like swain ezreal they're very good against aggro but not necessarily like there's other mid-range decks that can go bigger right your targon decks you like we saw there with the sharima deck there's other decks that can go bigger we had the guillotines some of the games we didn't need them some of those other games where we need a guillotine like against nasus and stuff not so much but a very good ancient hour class play by my opponent that last game all right so yeah that was that's just kind of the story of the day we had other decks just go bigger and um these removal spells didn't work out as well when against uh bigger decks where we're sitting with you know vile feast and unspeakable horror and and withering whale and cooling strike and our opponents are just slamming down a whole bunch of like eight eights and stuff didn't work out so well all right but that's it here for kindred swain so those y'all watching later on youtube feel uh feel free to leave those comments if you've been playing this deck or any of these other decks let me know how they've been going for you hopefully you've been playing against some better matchups or you know finding the right part of your deck a little bit more than i did today but that's all right that's that's uh you know part of it all right but that's all i got here for kindred swain so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video